Professor Honan, it's good to be with you in, in company with you virtually. Um, usually this time of the year, we, we're going to plan for our first IEM session to start planning for the, uh, the next IEM. Uh, but let's just start by talking about how we came together. Like, you know, how did we first connect? Because it was not necessarily something that I thought would be an enduring connection. But let's talk about that a little bit. And this is unlikely when we think about the long-term relationship that you and I have had over the years. So as I recall, Rich, um, I had been doing some work with your teacher and mentor, Dr. Charles Willey, and he and I were working on a grant with the Bush Foundation doing leadership development work in HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. And Dr. Willey and I traveled the country and visited uh, many, many uh, leaders from HBCUs. And as part of that work, Chuck would always mention the possibility of some research or writing that up or doing a book. And as I remember, you and Dr. Willie had previously co-authored a book on Black families. And somehow that led to a grant through the Southern Education Fund to deal with leadership in HBCUs. And I think that led to the idea of this book that you and Dr. Willie were gonna do. And somehow I met you in a meeting with That's you, right. and Dr. Willie and Ron Brown and say, we're doing a, a book on leadership in HBCUs. Yeah, and I remember Dr. Willie kind of willing that out of the ether. We had a meeting with SEM. Uh, they had given us this idea that we need to work on a report of some kind. and. You know, Chuck was like, we could do a book and, you know, we got Jim and we've got Rich, we got Ron. And of course, you know, Jim is a seasoned professional, but, you know, Rich and Ron are, are rookies. And we're like, are you sure about this? Uh, and so, of course, uh, I guess after probably a year and a half of us working together, uh, you very graciously declined an authorship. You, you really were a pivotal part of that study and that work. Um, and you allowed these two emerging scholars to have that opportunity. Uh, and, and so that's when I kind of recognized, I'd, I'd heard the rumors of Professor Honan's great, he's great to work with, you know, people raving about your classes. I never had the pleasure of having your class, but I do remember that kind of established like, man, that Jim Honan's a solid guy. And so to build on that work, as I recall, after the book came out, Rich, you continued your doctoral studies at the Graduate School of Education and our current Dean, Bridget Terry Long turned out to be your advisor. And I remember vaguely this process, you were finishing your degree and I was going about my faculty work, but that was an important phase for you because you completed your studies at the ed school and then left. Yeah, and I, th and I, I thought that was the end of it, right? I mean, it was a great run. I had this great sort of experience of mentoring. I'd gotten involved with the Alumni of Color Conference and that was my connection. So I thought, well, you know, I'll come back every few years and be at AOCC. But you know, it was a good deal. And you know, love Bridget, love Chuck, love Jim. I'll I'll see you every so often. Um, but I, I didn't realize that the connections that I had made, like the connections you had made with folks like Pat Graham and and, and John Wilson, that you know, these are enduring relationships. They don't just go away. And so I'd find myself. Uh, either coming back to to visit and giving you a shout or uh, giving Bridget a shout. Just, you know, it's just something to stay connected. I love the fact that, for instance, we've had this opportunity, and you can talk about this a little bit, to bring our mentors back into the IEM space. Um, you've brought Pat back. Uh, we bought Chuck back. Obviously, Bridget's part of that. So we have this sort of reunion of, of mentors, and that's something really special to me that we've been able to do that. And me too, and I think these circles of connection of teachers and mentors and now colleagues um, that has happened to both you and I, we, we teach with our teachers and work with our teachers in a certain sense. So then fast forward a bit, Rich, you continue your career as a faculty member at the University of Texas, Austin. These days, you're also an administrator, you're an associate dean there. Somewhere along the way, and I forget exactly the details, um, there was an opportunity to add a faculty co-chair leadership role to the Institute for Educational Management, IEM, something that I'd been involved with for quite some time, and we wanted to make sure we had sustainable and fresh and wise leadership moving forward. So 
I forget the exact details, but our Dean's office uh, was making outreach to you, Rich Reddick, and said, would you consider serving as the IEM faculty co-chair? And you were on the receiving end of that call that I did not make others made. So what was that like? And that's what brings us together now. Yeah, I, I think, frankly, it would have been too overwhelming if not knowing that I would be working alongside Jim Honan. And, and, and Jim, you had this way about you that um, despite your 30 odd years of involvement IEM, um, I never felt like I'm subordinate. In fact, you kind of jostled me out of that space. Like, no, 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 this is, we're co-faculty leads on this. This is how it works. And so of course that first year with you and Jamie was really like, okay, what's happening next? Uh, show me that Excel sheet. But I, I think the moment to me was when we were sitting down and talking uh, to these amazing educational leaders and you provided the space for me to be an equal. And I would say, well, I have an idea. And it might be, you're like, that's a great idea. Let's do that. And, and those changes started to happen um, fairly immediately. So uh, feeling a sense of ownership with IEM uh, was so easy. And, and I think um, honestly, if it had been a cold call and like, hey, I, I'd like, I'm not ready for that. Uh, the selling point was, and Jim Honan isn't going anywhere. <laughs> he, he's going to be the co-chair, but we would love you to be part of this conversation. And as I've said to you a million times, I'll sit in the back in, in GOA where we've both spent so much time as, as students, as teaching fellows, and as faculty members, uh, just absorbing what happens. Like the our, our mentors up front and our friends teaching uh, this amazing group of educational leaders from around the world and seeing the magic that takes place. I mean, it, it, it's thrilling. And quite frankly, as a 22 year old, I guess, you know, graduate student or whatever I was, I'm not that now, but I just couldn't imagine, um, okay, in about 20 years, I'm gonna be back here uh, and you're gonna be actually sort of orchestrating this stuff with Jim, with Jamie, with Stephen, with the whole, Lisa, with the whole crew and, and making this experience happen. Um, that has been easily one of the most validating experiences I've had um, as a faculty member because I actually get to be in the space where I learn really cutting edge uh, leadership techniques uh, from our leaders, our faculty members, our leaders. And it's in a safe environment where literally you and I can sort of sort of talk to each other and say, hey, I think tomorrow we should do something a little different. Or I think this group is having to struggle with this kind of thing. That, that has been um, all of the skills I had as a helping person, as an administrator, as a student leader, all come to the fore. It's like being a teaching fellow, a grad student, a faculty member, an administrator, all in one for 10 days, which it, it's a thrill. And I don't know how you, you're Iron Man. I don't know how you are able to do that and then jump to other things, uh, the other such as you do with professional education. Yeah, so let me say a few words about that. And it's an interesting history that both you and I have around that special place, Larson G08, the classroom. And so both of us were students in there, both of us were teaching fellows in there, and now both of us are IEM co-chairs in there. So for me, that place has a really, really special character, character to it. I also remember at the end of your first year of chairing IEM, only at the end, did we let the participants in the group know that it was your first year? And I remember looking across to you, but also most importantly, looking out at the audience, which I thought was really interesting to me to say, wow, that's incredible. We just told people that this was actually Rich Reddick's first time chairing. And that's how skilled, that's how skilled you really are. And then, so where this brings me, so this takes us to a different level of a relationship. We're collaborators, we're co-workers, we strategize together, we do the good, bad, the ugly together, whatever it takes to get the work done. Then I think about um, what the future holds. And what I have appreciated most about working with you, Rich Reddick, and will continue to do so, is I think education is inherently an optimistic profession. And I'm optimistic and hopeful. We're certainly in hard and complex times on so many levels. But for me, looking ahead in the work we have ahead of us in IEM together, I am hopeful and optimistic in our ability to work together and design 
leadership programs and opportunities that will provide leaders with the capacity they need to effectively lead colleges and universities through this challenging time. For me, that makes it worth it ever so much to work with you. You know, I, I think that's precisely how I feel. And also, you have an incredible eye for talent. You know people who are emerging in, into a space. And so that's one thing that you probably learned from Pat and Chuck. I've learned it from you is to sort of figure out, we need to make sure we give this person some opportunities because they're going to do some pretty amazing things. And so that, that's something I'm very, very grateful for, my friend. And I appreciate that a lot. I guess our teachers, both yours and mine, <laughs> they believed in us every once in a while when I sit up in the front with you as we're closing IEM to say, who would have thought that both of us would be sitting in the front, you know, leading one of the most important programs at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And I think about it and say, well, our teachers believed in us. They thought we had something to offer. We could do it and gave us that opportunity. So for me, looking forward, that gives me both hope and a great deal of optimism. Um, so I look forward to that as well. So Rich, I think a lot about what makes me optimistic about the future, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that we pay attention to our mentors and our teachers. And one of the things I really appreciate during IEM is we've found time and opportunity to reconvene our teachers and mentors for some precious time together. And I don't know if you want to say a word about that, but it's certainly important to me. Yeah, I think that was very artfully done um, in my first IEM when we brought Dr. Willie back um, to uh, connect because I think David Wilson was on the dais with you. So we had David Wilson there. Uh, and of course we had Dr. Willie in the room and you, and, and then we also had Pat Graham there. So my two, of our men, two of our mentors uh, were there. And of course your good friend, David Wilson was there too. And after that, uh, we decided to do, to do lunch. And, you know, I hadn't had a chance to connect with uh, Dr. Willie and his wife, Mary Sue, for several years. You know, we'd do phone calls, that kind of thing. But we actually got them to come out of Concord and got them to drive up Appian Way and just sat at the table. And, you know, Pat gave us great stories about what she was doing. And, and the thing about these folks is that they're, they're such great people. So we weren't talking about the latest research and what we had published. We were just talking about how is life treating you? What are you thinking about? And they were talking about the people that excited them, their family members, uh, their students. Um, it, it's just, it was just a, a wonderful moment. I never thought, I used to be in the Harvard Ed Review and I remember sitting in you know, the Elliott Lyman room and seeing the portraits of all of the, the deans of the School of Education, of course, there's Pat up on the wall and there's Pat right next to me and we're talking and he's just like the most energetic, thoughtful historian. We actually brought her back as well for um, IEM 50, which is also a lot of fun. So, right. you know, what does IEM mean for us and what does it mean um, about the future and, and hope? We are building a bridge, I think, between the folks that shaped and mentored us and a generation and generations of Harvard Graduate School of Education, students, faculty, staff members, uh, friends, and we're also connecting to what they've done. So it's personally incredibly validating. It, it reminds me of something I've found in my research, which is about mentoring. When I talk to mentors, they always kind of look at me conspiratorially and say, Rich, I don't know if I should tell you this or not, but I'm having way more fun doing this than the mentee is. Like this is way more beneficial for me Right. I kind of feel that way about being an IEM uh, faculty co-chair. I feel like I'm getting the most out of the experience because I get to see our IEMers just have the most incredible conversations and engagement. And then we get to see our mentors, our advisors, Bridget Terry Long is teaching them, you know. Uh, you know, it's just like a great sort of connection. And maybe it's something that only you and I and a few other people know about, but we have we have this connection between all of these folks. And we always tell people that. We always you know, embarrass Judy McLaughlin and tell her that Judy was my advisor and my wife's advisor. Right. Uh, talk about keeping it in the family, right? Um, and she's up there and we're just gonna hear her talk about college presidencies. And, and so that has been um, easily one of the most exciting things that makes me hopeful that the folks who taught me so long ago are still doing it with the same verve and enthusiasm and excitement. So 
you know, how can we not be excited about that, I guess? Exactly. And then looking forward, what we're trying to do now is then continue to pass those batons. So when you think about newer IEM faculty members who are now on our team, newer than you or I, people like yep. Tony Jack or, Anthony or Andrew Ho and others. Robin Chapman. Yeah. Robin Chapman. These are our opportunities to give back those terrific relationships. And I know to a person, if you ask any one of them, ask Robin, ask Andrew, ask uh, Tony, do you enjoy teaching in IEM to a person like, this is really good too for me. So I think yeah. that's our work moving forward. We have a certain obligation to pass it on to the next generation, which I hope we'll do. Well, the fact that these folks move their vacation times and whatever, so they can be here and be part of this, uh, Roberto Gonzalez will change whatever he's doing. He's like, I, I'll, I gotta be there. Uh, yeah. One of our innovations has been doing the uh, diversity and inclusion panel, and that's been so much fun. And and literally, it's like I'm leading a session, but I want to sit in the other sessions. So we've been able to innovate, and I think that's because you really have brought this idea. Like we have to keep reinventing. We have to keep bringing new ideas out there. So again, it's it's impossible not to be hopeful about this because. You know, we've got some of the things that we've been doing for years in the IEM, and every year we've got something new. We're trying this for the first time. And we're trying it because we've got data to support what we're doing, but also because we've got really smart people around the table who have said, can we have more of this? Can we have more engagement in this space? So, you know, you are the orchestrator of all of those sorts of uh, innovations. And, you know, you could have been a very territorial person and we don't do it that way, but you've always been like, Let, let's try that. Let's let's see what happens. Well, I look forward to continued partnership uh, moving forward, my friend. We have plenty of work to do, so let's get to it. We do indeed. Uh, Thanks, this friend. is fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>